All right, Adam, thank you so much. All right, uh, the U.S. military will be ready to fight. That's the message from Defense Secretary James Mattis on North Korea as the president doubles down on his strong stance against the rogue regime. Kelly Wright joins us now with the latest. Good morning, Kelly. Jillian, good morning to you and Rob as well. The Trump administration is making it very clear that it will not tolerate much longer any provocative nuclear action from North Korea. President Trump continues to take a hard-line approach to dealing with North Korea and its leader Kim Jong-un. In his latest tweet on the subject, President Trump tweeted this, Our country has been unsuccessfully dealing with North Korea for 25 years, giving billions of dollars and getting nothing. Policy didn't work. So the Trump administration is still pursuing a diplomatic solution to all of this, plus it imposed tougher economic sanctions on North Korea. Meantime, Defense Secretary James Mattis, speaking to the Association of the U.S. Army's annual meeting in D.C., explains the Army may be called to action if diplomacy fails. It is right now a diplomatically led, economic sanctioned, buttressed effort to try to turn North Korea off this path. The international community has spoken, but that means the U.S. Army must stand ready. And here's what you have to understand. The Trump administration maintains that it wants a peaceful solution with North Korea, but it is willing to tough talk and to carry a big stick to intervene with military might to remove the nuclear threat from the rogue regime. Jillian, Rob. All right, Kelly, thank you so much. All right, the White House now also taking strong steps on another key issue, and that is immigration. But can they get Democrats to get on board here? That's the big question. And here now to weigh in from the Center for Immigration Studies is Dr. Stephen Camerata. Stephen, thank you for joining us. I want to just jump right in and ask you, do you see any aspects of this where both parties can agree? Well, you know, it used to be the case that the Democrats were much more enthusiastic about enforcement, but now they see enforcement as just a bargaining chip. They used to really want to go after the employers. They used to want to control the border. But today, the Democratic Party generally sees most efforts at enforcing the law, even holding criminals who are people who get arrested and holding them in jails. You know, as we know, there are cities all over America that when the Immigration Service asks them to hold that person, the, the local community or, the, you know, the local government won't do it. So enforcement is just not something the Democrats uh, want to be uh, involved with anymore in the way that they used to seem to well, believe. And, and Doc, that's what you know drives people crazy about politics. Less than 10 years ago, you had two of the biggest names in Democratic politics, Obama and Clinton, voting uh, to complete 700 miles of pedestrian fencing along the southern border, basically to build a wall. And now, not even 10 years later, all of a sudden, to build a wall is racist, according to the left, and is insensitive and it is it's it's just how does it change that fast and it just it appears to me to be purely political i mean how can you pull a move like that i mean don't think there's a history there yeah, except I think most Democratic voters want the border controlled. They want immigration enforcement. But there's a small segment in the Democratic Party that sees any kind of enforcement, even deporting someone who's been arrested and is already in jail, even doing that, they see as controversial. And they seem to be in the driver's seat. And they've managed to pull the Democratic Party all the way over to, I guess what you'd say is the left, so that Hillary Clinton during the campaign said, look, anybody who basically is here illegally, unless they're a murder, robber, or rapist, they get to stay. That was her basic policy. And that was not the policy of her husband, that's for sure. Do you think this is just comes down to basic symbolism, the fact that they don't want to agree with President Trump? Well, look, yes. I mean, obviously, um, there is some of that. There's always some of that. But I do think that the real energy in the Democratic Party on the left really does see most forms of immigration enforcement as uh, illegitimate. People kind of, they figure, should have a right if they make it here to sort of stay here. We don't really have a sovereign right to send them home. I don't think that's what most Democratic voters think, but at least the, the, the left wing of the Democratic Party, which seems to be in charge, thinks that. Well, that's a very good point, is that there is a big difference between the mainstream, you know, Democrats and the far left part of the party. But to the, to the far left's point is that, I mean, you've got the same people clamoring for free education, free health care, also saying you need to have open borders, too. If you ever implemented that, the country would go belly up so fast we wouldn't believe it. I mean, you can't have free things and open borders at the same time.
No, that, that's certainly true. All the things that Democrats care to care about, they, you know, say they care about, like public education, like the working poor, one of the reasons we limit immigration is to make sure our schools don't get overwhelmed. One of the reasons we limit is to make sure there aren't so many workers at the bottom end of the labor market to push down wages. So you, and there was a long tradition of the Democratic Party recognizing that things that progressive wanted, wanted were often in conflict with open borders. But that seems to have gone away largely and within the Democratic Party. All right, Dr. Stephen Camerata, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Sure, thanks for having me. All right, thanks, Doc. 11 minutes after the hour, finally, a controversy-free night of football. How nice. <laughs> All players standing for Monday Night Football's national anthem. And this morning, Mike Ditka has a message to those who want to continue to sit or kneel during the anthem. Remember when Kathy Griffin thought it was funny to behead President Trump? How can we forget this image? Well, the disgraced comedian is back. What she did this time. That's come out. All right, welcome back. Remember uh, Kathy Griffin, comedian Kathy Griffin's tearful apology for uh, this photo with a bloody prop of President Trump's head? I went too far. I made a mistake and I was wrong. No, she doesn't feel that way anymore. Griffin returning to the stage in Los Angeles wearing a mask of the president, we are told, waving her middle finger in the air and then taking a knee on the stage. There you have it. Oh, boy. All right, an artist taking their own jab at President Trump with this giant pincushion. The artwork, part of a contest in Michigan and getting serious backlash, as you can imagine, it allows visitors to take a push pin and stick it anywhere on the caricature of the president. More than 10,000 pins have been jabbed. It did not win the competition. <laughs> well, guess what? We saw our first uh, Monday Night Football action where there wasn't too much controversy on the sidelines during the anthem. Remember when any. football was just football? And yeah, you didn't I have do. To think about this I crap do, actually. In the of a football game. <laughs> yeah, everyone stood last nice. night, yeah. which is the first time, I think, all season that that's happened, that I've seen it happen anyway. Yeah, and it's, it's been a, a tough topic for the NFL. And uh, actually, Jerry Jones, the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, came out and told his players they're going to get benched if you don't stand for the anthem. And the president actually thanked the owner of the Dallas Cowboys for that in a tweet. Um, um, and uh, let's go ahead and pull that up here. A big salute to Jerry Jones, owner of the Dallas Cowboys, who will bench players who disrespect our flag, stand for anthem, or sit for game. Yeah. Um Listen, Jerry Jones from the beginning, from last season, has been pretty adamant about not wanting to be involved in this, not wanting his players to be involved in this. So I will admit I was a little surprised a couple weeks ago. I think it was week three when uh, Jerry Jones partook in the demonstration, I'll call it. I won't even say a protest. Right. When they took a knee before the national yeah. anthem, then they stood up. That surprised me. And now the yeah. fact that just a couple weeks later he's coming so hard on this, I'm kind of wondering, like, just... Yeah, well, I, I think Stick he's. With your opinion. Uh, he's trying. Well, I think he's trying to find that middle ground it's where it's hard. like there is a discussion to be had about yeah. police brutality, but there's also a country that needs to be respected as well. These two things don't have to happen in yep. the exact in the same two minutes. You know, you don't have to kneel for the anthem just because you believe in something. Right. Yeah. Um, by the way, Jerry Jones did say there's a quote in here, an article I was reading this morning, uh, saying that he's removing everything from this. He's removing politics. He says what I have the right to say is who's on that football field. So he's pretty adamant about this it's, at this point. It's very interesting. And here's Burgess Owens. Uh, we. We've had him on a number of times uh, who's uh, had a pretty mm -hmm. tough stance on this whole thing. Let's listen to what he had to say. I'm proud of a president who drew a line and said, you know, enough of this progressively trying to steal our, our heritage and our pride in our country. We now have a chance, these kids have a chance, uh, young men, uh, in the off season to truly put their money where their mouth is. There's a problem there in our community. We need to address it. It's going to come from those who have billions of dollars sitting on the sideline investing hope and encouragement and jobs and mentorship to those kids that right now don't have hope. So it's, it's a great, great win. We just have to not let our guard down because the leftists will always continue to come at us. And a lot of people are sounding off on this, including legendary Bears coach Mike Ditka. Uh, here's what he had to say. We have a sot for you that we can read. He says, when you want to protest, protest when the game is over. Football has been so good to these guys. Enjoy it. Have fun with it. I don't care who you are, how much money you make. If you don't respect our country, then you shouldn't be in this country playing football. And he said that on Monday Night Football, yep, and he on says, ESPN. He says, go to another country and play football. Yeah. If you had to go somewhere else and try to play the sport, you wouldn't have a job. If you don't respect this flag and this country, then you don't know what this is all about. I would say, adios.
some pretty tough words. I'd but, say that's look, well said. I mean, the game the game's a little different nowadays. Yeah. The players are a little different nowadays. Like you talked to a lot of these guys who've been in the game many years ago, and their opinion is very strong about that. And I feel All like right. a lot of the younger guys can learn a lot by listening to them. Yeah. Well, the country's changed a lot since yep. Mike Ditka was the coach of the Bears. The so. Bears. All right. <laughs> it go. is 19 minutes after the hour right now. Pulled off the air, an ESPN host suspended for attacking America's team and the president. And apparently it's a crime to have pro-life beliefs. Twitter uh, now deciding it's offensive, and they're going to censor that. Carly Chip is here with some outrage online. That's coming up next. All right, welcome back. And benched, the ESPN host who once accused President Trump of being a white supremacist, now on the sidelines yet again for making another controversial comment on Twitter. Uh, Carly Shimkus with Fox News Headlines 24-7, Sirius XM 115, is here with the growing controversy that people yes. can't stop talking about. Yeah, the story of Jamel Hill and her politically charged tweets continues. So ESPN has suspended her for two weeks after she slammed Cowboys owner Jerry Jones on Twitter for saying that he would bench any player who does not stand for the national anthem. So here are the tweets that got Jamel Hill in trouble. She says, Cowboys have a huge national following. Lots of black and brown folks are Cowboys fans. What if they turn their backs on them? If the rationale behind Jerry Jones's stance is keeping the fan base happy, make him see that he underestimated how all of his fan base feels. Or how about not patronizing the advertisers who support the Cowboys? You can watch and do that. That, right? Well, a few weeks ago, uh, Jamel Hill, of course, made headlines for calling President Trump a white supremacist on Twitter. She was not punished then, but she was uh, handed a two-week suspension this time because ESPN says she violated their social media policy for a second time. But some people on social media say that ESPN didn't go far enough. This person says, if you ask me, she deserves more than a two-week suspension, calling that outrageous. Another Twitter user said she should be fired, not just suspended. Suspended. On the other side of that are people like Al Sharpton and Rosie O'Donnell who have come out on social media saying that they're outraged that she was suspended and she should be allowed to say how she feels on Twitter. And to my knowledge, we still don't know if she's suspended with or without pay. Yes, yeah, we do not know okay. if she's going to be paid within this period of time or if she's going to have to take a two-week pay cut. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. The, the edit from Twitter on this one, I just <laughs> couldn't believe the line that they cut out. Yeah, and it just we're about my to mind. play it for you. Yeah. So Twitter is under fire for blocking Congresswoman Marsha Blackburn's Senate campaign ad because of this line about Planned Parenthood. Take a listen. I'm 100% pro-life. I fought Planned Parenthood and we stopped the sale of baby body parts. Thank God. So Baby Body Parts got that ad banned from Twitter. So a Twitter spokesperson told Blackburn's campaign that that line was deemed inflammatory and will likely uh, evoke a strong negative.